It was one of the most unusual things that you will ever see in a ball game. Right when the inning was over, Jim Leland got tossed by the home plate umpire, James Hoy. Now, God bless America is going to be played, so he takes the hat off and actually chills out for the rendition of God Bless America. When God Bless America is over, boy, does he take off on James Hoy. And for him to just come out enraged and just to put it on hold for 30 seconds, it was amazing. It was more than 30 seconds. It's, uh, then when the song is finished. Then he goes. Now, the reason why he's arguing, because he had been thrown out of the game, uh, I guess the Tigers were upset with Hoy's uh, strike zone today, the hitters are, and Bonderman was while he was on the mound. So, uh, Jimmy, getting his money's worth, I'll tell yeah. you that. But stopped on a dime when yeah. he heard Bob Shepard introducing right. God Bless America. Very respectful. Yes, man. he is. Very patriotic. <laughs> oh, man, that tests the resolve of a young umpire when a fired up Jim Leland comes after you during a seventh oh. inning stretch. That was like a scene out of slap shot. James Hoy, who was the umpire in that clip, <laughs> joining us on the broadcast on this Tuesday morning. James, before oh, we get gosh. into uh, Ump's Care, good morning. <laughs> And when you watch that clip back many years later, and you've been a big league umpire for over 20 years, uh, what goes through your mind? So at the time, I was an up and down guy, so I wasn't full time. And I remember ejecting him. And then when he came out, I was like, isn't this when we have God Bless America? And, you know, then Shepard gives us the old, hey, please stand for Kate Smith's rendition. And I go, is he going to yell at me this whole time? Like, this is going to be forever. And when we stopped, we're standing there, I was like, well, this is the craziest thing I've ever been a part of. And I remember after the game, we got in the locker room. And of course, it was an ESPN game. And Larry Young, who was the crew chief, he looked at me. He goes, that's probably the most crazy thing I've ever been a part of. And I was like, man, I was like, that was like for me, I was like, oh, I got I had an ejection on an ESPN game. I didn't feel good about my plate job. We're standing there. God bless America. And then here we are. He gets in the Hall of Fame. And now they're getting a lot of mileage out of that video. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you sure are. Oh, that is funny. amazing. I mean, I had a yeah. great question after that, but that is just incredible. Now, that happened. Has there ever been a, a, a manager? I know Buck Showalter is one that sits there and asks a lot of guys a lot of questions on your why you made that call. Has everybody ever got you to a point where you go, huh, what's he talking about in the middle of their argument? There's been a few. Uh, Jim has been a good one about that. Leland was. And then after that incident with Jim, he was always, he goes, hey, Junior, how you doing? Like, after, after that, it was like I, I kind of proved myself for Jim. And then he kind of let me work after that. So it was kind of like, we'll see what this kid can do. And then after that, he's always been great to me. So, yeah. You know, what, you know what I've always wondered about some of those uh, run-ins, James, and we hear about it, I guess, in the minor leagues a lot, is the guy that just doesn't want to be there anymore. And he comes out and says, run me, run me. And then he goes into the histrionics without really a case. And you oblige because he's asked you to run him. Is that something that really happens at the big league level? Or is that just minor league folklore? More, more from the minor leagues. The, the major leagues, no. I mean, because the games mean so much now, and you know those managers need to be out there because they're important to everything. So, uh, in the minor leagues, yeah, we've had guys come out and say, "Hey, you're going to have to run me," and we're like, "If we have to sit and watch this, you're going to have to sit and watch this." So, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, tell us about uh, Ump's Care and the holiday initiative that uh, you and uh, your brethren are doing. It's uh, called 100 Bears for the Holidays. Tell us about it. Yeah, so the, uh, the Ump's Care was formed around 2006, and it was a time where we tried to find like our niche of what we can do to help the community. And so we started to do this Build-A-Bear um, thing, and we, we would go to hospitals, and we would try to go to these kids. And sometimes you see these kids, and they're really sick, and it's an opportunity for us to go, hey, maybe we can lighten their day up a little bit. So that first year in 2006, I think we had 30 bears. I think we had 30 bears we built. And then since then, now we're over 20,000 bears to hospital. Wow. Um, and so, awesome. yeah, and so it's an opportunity for us um, to go. That was my crew this year. Earlier this year, we went to a, a Chicago hospital. Um, and, you know, you get up in the morning, you, it kind of changes your routine a little bit for the game. But then when you get there and you see these kids smile, and you go through it and the parents are just like, this is really nice of you to do. When we leave there, you kind of feel like, man, I feel really good about today. Um, and so it's just an opportunity for us umpires to do that. Um, and this year was odd is the fact that we did something in the off season. Uh, Jen, who is the president of our group, she contacted 
myself and Mark Wagner here in Tampa and asked if we would do something in the off season. So like the first week of November, uh, Mark and his wife, Michelle, myself and my wife, Sherry, we did uh, the John Hopkins All Children's Hospital here in Tampa. Uh, and it was different because it was an off season uh, gig. So it was really nice. It's just nice to do those kind of things for us. And this 100 Bears for the Holidays is a donation system. Uh, the Arby's Foundation is actually matching up to $10,000 of donations. Wow. Uh, and we're like, they're around 9,500. So we're really close to our goal. Our goal is 15,000, um, but Arby's is matching. And we're at like 9,600, I think, for the goal of uh, the Arby's Foundation of matching it. So I, I, what I love this does the, is this. I love the thought of bears. for the bears for next year. Yeah. Because that's something that kids are going to keep with them. You know, I mean, they're going to carry that for a lifetime, something to look at, to encourage, be with them, be a friend. Who came up with the yeah. idea of a bear, did, did, or that just came about? It just came about. So it was something that when we go to the hospitals, you know, uh, the kids look at us and go, who are you? You're an umpire, big deal. You know, <laughs> when we have the mascots with us, it's an opportunity. They see the mascot and they relate us to the baseball. But the Bears has kind of opened up a nice avenue for us. Uh, hmm. Hey, we're with the baseball team. We're the umpires. Here's an opportunity. Here's a bear. Um, and then they get to dress the bear and then put it, you know, they build a house, a condo for it, and they can get to color it and stuff. And, you know, it's kind of neat for us to see that. And you guys are out there doing this kind of work, not just during the holidays. If I heard you correctly, you're out there on game days, actually making hospital visits as well. Correct. So um, we normally do the group usually does between 10 and 15 hospital visits a season. So like They'll get fit, the you know ten crews. They'll do one visit a year, and then this year we did. I did two with the off-season visit. So it's usually one or two visits per crew a year. So it's an opportunity for us, and you know it depends on the hospital. Sometimes like Chicago doesn't have an opportunity for it, so we'll do something in Cincinnati or Cleveland or Toronto. So yeah, it, we try to do it. We try to get the hospitals once a year. Hey, James, how many umpires are there now? And how, in the rotation, there's, there's obviously those that are members that are up all the time. Then you have guys that are brought around. How many umpires are we, we talking about now? 76 full-time. And then there's That's a right. rotation of about 15 or 20 guys that would rotate for injury, time off, uh, stuff like that. And so. that includes the replay, going to New York and all Correct. that stuff? So at any time, there's eight guys in replay. So out of the 76, you'll take eight. There's 68 guys. I don't think the, the lay fan understands how orchestrated this is with umpires and the replay command center and with what they do, the training they go through. I think it's of the things that are in baseball, James, see if you agree with this or not. I've long said this, that fans think they can do these three things better than the people that actually have the jobs. They think they can be better umpires. They think they can be better broadcasters. On that one, they're probably right. And they think they can be GMs. I, I, I think of those sure. three things, the hardest craft is what you guys undertake. Well, I would agree with you because obviously that's my position. Um, <laughs> and, and everybody's, I mean, I have two boys that play baseball now and I sit in the stands where I sit. I sit out in right field by myself because when you sit in the middle of the stands, everybody's got a better view. Like, I can't believe that guy was safe. Again. Everybody's had that <laughs> since yeah. from whenever. Everybody's got a better view. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot entailed that we, you know, we work really hard at our craft. And I understand it. we've always said this. It's not the 99 things I did right. It's the one thing I did wrong that we oh. remember. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, it's. You know, it's one of those things you just keep grinding and try to you, you do your best that you can. Hey, one last thing. The, the, uh, obviously, there's different challenges, whether it's on the bases, ball down the line or whatever, but home plate gets the most attention. So what's the biggest challenge at the plate? Is it the square box? Is it the uh, outside pitch? Is it the framing? What's the biggest challenge for umpires? Uh, Am I getting you in trouble? The, I saw that look. Well, no, no. It's just <laughs> um, the challenge is obviously is there's variations for every every time a new batter gets up, there's a different set. Like the catcher's not in the same spot. The pitcher throws it a little harder. The batter's taller, shorter. So all of those change every batter. And so now your job is to be yeah, as consistent as possible. Yeah, and with that, the possible. strike zone changes because everybody thinks it stays the same. It changes for each hitter, right? Correct. Correct. So that's just, it's everything that changes to every batter, every, and you know, the, so Jose Altuve have four at bats in a game. 
but it's not the same because now they're throwing inside to him instead of outside. So now the ball's moving different and it's a different pitcher. So all of those things, you know, obviously we're trying to eliminate all of them, but sometimes it, you know, you do the best that you can. Hey, last thing for me, and then Matt is going to wrap this up. Uh, is it more challenging? We always talk about hitters seeing so many different pitchers now. What about umpires? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing, like, you know, back in the day, you'd see one submarine or every, you know, like twice a year. And so those pitches were really difficult because the ball moved a lot more. Now it seems like, um, and when I first started, relievers were throwing in the mid-90s. Now you have starters that throw, you know, seven innings of 95, 98 miles an hour, and then they'll, they'll you know, yank one at you, you know, 92 with a split, and then they'll throw the splitter in. So the ball's moving a lot more, I think, now than it did back then. We would agree with that for sure. How many Otani games did you have? Uh, I've, I've never seen him pitch. Mm. I've never had him pitch. It's it's something. Let me tell you, uh, you'll have you'll have I, uh, a chance in a couple of years after that second TJ heals up. Hey, uh, visit yeah. umpscare.com for more information on the umpires holiday initiative. And I would suggest this too, James, before we go. I know you focus on uh, the, the children's hospital visits, but if you ever kind of move into the senior world, uh, maybe if Hawk Harrelson gets his other hip done, you could send Wegner over to say hi. We have always had problems with this guy right here. Dang, come. That would be, that'd be just a personal thing that I'd love to see. We appreciate the visit, man. Uh, great job by you and, and your umpire colleagues on this initiative, and we appreciate the visit. Happy holidays to you.